Hello, and welcome to today's info session. We're talking about five common fat loss mistakes and how to overcome them. So over the last 14 years, I've been working with people, Kate and I have been working with people specifically on fat loss. And we've seen some common trends that come up over those years. And there are five of them. And so I want to cover them today so that you don't get caught up with one of these common mistakes and help you to overcome and move forward. So the first thing is not having enough consistency. So you always hear consistency is key and it is true. So we want to make sure that we do not break the chain. So imagine that there's a chain similar to like how you would cross days off a calendar. You don't want to have a gap. You don't want to break between that chain. So if you can keep a chain going of your consistency, uh, your consistent habits, the things that you're doing that are helping you towards your fat loss goal, then you want to stay consistent with that. Most people drop off intermittently. They have weekends off. They have, you know, times on and off, on and off. And it really does mess with the momentum because momentum is a huge factor when it comes to burning fat and getting fit, building muscle, just overall health and well-being. Um, um, to be consistent and have that momentum, it's absolutely critical. So by not breaking the chain, it allows you to gain that traction and get that momentum, which then turns into a really big result. If we're constantly stopping and starting, we never really get that momentum flowing. So it's really hard to then see that accumulative result. So not breaking the chain is huge. And um, it's one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen people make over the years where they're just um, consistently being inconsistent. Um, so the two main areas that we need to not break that consistency around is with nutrition and hydration is the first part. And then with workouts and walks is the second part. So we're talking about calories in and we're talking about calories out. So with nutrition and hydration, we're talking about bringing stuff in. So this is where we need to be super, super diligent to make sure that we're on track or on a path or following a plan and we're sticking to that. And that is what we're doing without breaking that chain. And similarly with the workouts and walks, that's our input out. So or our output. So that's our um, calories coming out. So when we're working out regularly, we're constantly burning a certain amount of calories every day. And we're tuning our metabolism to know how much to burn and to get used to burning a lot of calories. Same with our walks. We're moving the body, we're burning calories, and we need to be consistent with that. The next thing is not prioritizing and planning, because what you don't prioritize doesn't get done, or it doesn't get done effectively. <clears throat> so we need to make the commitment and prioritize and plan so that the things actually do get done and so that we actually do stay consistent. So we need to get pen to paper. So whether it's a diary or a notepad or a, a note in your phone, um, whatever works for you, we need to get stuff out of our head and onto paper. Because once you get it out of your head, then it makes a lot more sense. You can see a snapshot of what you're thinking and what you want to do. And then that helps you to turn that into a reality. So when I say pen to paper, I'm talking about writing down all of the things that you need to um, accomplish the things that you need to plan, the things that you need to prioritize. So workout wise. So like, when will you be working out? What days specifically for how long? What's your training um, location? Are you going to the gym? Is it going to be at home? Are you going for a run? Like, what are you doing specifically? Get all of that organized. And then same with your hydration. How much hydration do you need every day? How are you going to make sure you hit that goal? If that's a challenge for you. And then with your diet, you know, planning, that kind of stuff. So just getting everything out onto paper is going to make everything seem a lot more clearer so that you don't feel confused or overwhelmed or not know what to do. It will just help you to get a path uh, or a roadmap laid out so you, you know what you need to do. Um, so meal planning is a big part of that. So you really want to use a support app like MyFitnessPal, where you can um, track everything and you can enter all your food into that and it will do the calculations for you. You want to make it as easy as possible to um, know 
how you're getting the calories and the macros into your diet. So let my fitness pal do all of the hard work for you. Just put in the foods that you want to eat and then make those adjustments as you go to refine it, to hit your numbers. So um, planning out those meals is so critical in terms of the prioritizing and planning portion. And this is where a lot of people go wrong because they just leave it for the day. And then they say, oh, what am I going to do? They'll open the fridge, see what's there. Maybe they don't have all of the ingredients that they want. Maybe they're too tired to go to the shop and buy it. Maybe they'll just order a pizza. So these are the kind of things that happen when we're not prioritizing and planning on the meals and nutrition side of things. In terms of your workouts, we want to set them up like personal health appointments. So we want them in the calendar, just the same way that you would book an appointment with your doctor or with a therapist, you know, or something physio, whatever it may be, it's in the diary, it's booked in, you have a time to be there, a time to get out of there, and it gets done. Same thing with your work, meetings, whatever it is, picking up the kids, you know, whatever. You need to do the same thing for your personal health appointments. And what I mean by that is your workouts, your walks, um, even your meal prepping, your grocery shopping, all of this stuff needs to be set up in your calendar as an appointment that you don't miss. It's an appointment with yourself. It's not an appointment with anybody else. So that's why it's extra important to make sure you get it done because we're more likely to let ourselves down than we are to let others down. So that's why it's so beneficial to have a training buddy or to have somebody to do things with because then you can pair up, you can make a commitment to each other and then you will make sure that you meet that appointment or that you know, thing. Um, and then just doubling down and not doubling. So there's doublers and then there's people that double down. So a doubler will just try maybe eating healthy one time. They'll try and go to a gym or, or a workout or they'll try and go for a run or, and then they won't do nothing for another week or a month or whatever. And so this is the doubler. And so we do not want to be a doubler. And if you're this far into this um, info session now, you're not a doubler either. So you don't have to worry about that. You need to focus on doubling down. So all the efforts that you're doing now are great, but let's double down and go extra hard and really get even more organized with our prioritizing and our planning. And you will notice a big shift in your success with weight loss and fat loss because of that extra focus and attention that you're putting towards the prioritizing and the planning side of things. So it's very, very critical. And then the next mistake people make is not getting enough recovery. And a lot of people don't associate fat loss with recovery, but it is critical because recovery is what makes the whole routine sustainable. And we need it to be sustainable enough for you to stick with it long enough to get the result because it doesn't happen overnight. So sleep is such a huge factor not only to replenish your energy and, and keep your mindset strong, but also that's the time where you're actually losing weight, like physically, literally losing weight. It happens overnight while you're resting. You do all of the hard work in the day and then your body responds in the evening and overnight. So, you know, that's why you wake up in the morning and your weight is down because your body has metabolized all of the calories and it's burnt up all of the fat to, to refuel all of the energy that your body needs from all of the work that you've done in that day. So if you go on a big walk, you hit 10K steps, you do a 500 calorie or more workout, you know, hitting the gym, hitting the weights, um, and plus you have like a busy day as well, just in general. So you're burning maybe 2000 or more calories in the day. So all of that energy is expelled. So the body needs to rejuvenate. So it's going to pull from fat stores and it's going to, um, you know, find ways to generate energy and, and refuel you. And that's that process that we need to go through the day, the night, the yin, the yang. So sleep is very critical. You want to try and get at least seven hours every night or just try however you can to maximize the quality of your sleep. So if you can't get seven hours, then you want to just find ways to maximize the quality of your sleep, getting that deeper sleep. So that might be having like a wind down period before you go to bed where you can set yourself up so that you do fall asleep faster, um, releasing all of the hormones that help you sleep like melatonin uh, and lowering cortisol, things like that. So getting off the screens, um, maybe half an hour, an hour beforehand, going more into like reading, dimming the lights, setting up your bedroom as well so that you can have a high quality sleep so that the um, 
the temperatures set right. You're not too hot, not too cold. Um, it's a nice dark room. You've got some airflow, that kind of thing. Um, stretching and mobility is another one that is often overlooked in terms of a mistake that's being made with regards to fat loss. Because again, it's about trying to get a string of consistency happening. And if you're stretching and doing mobility exercises, that's working on all of your joints, all of your ligaments, all of your tendons, which we can sometimes tend to neglect. So when we're doing our weight training workouts, um, where we tend to be working more focusing on the muscles and strengthening the muscles and burning the calories, but not necessarily um, working specifically the ligaments and tendons. So by doing stretches and holding those stretch positions, even yoga, things like that, we're working on the tendons and the ligaments. It's making us more mobile. So we have freer movement and uh, we're driving that oxygenated blood into those tendons and ligaments to help them grow, heal and strengthen. It takes a lot longer for a tendon and a ligament to get conditioned to an exercise than it does a muscle. A muscle will grow very fast. And that will want to make you keep pushing because you'll feel stronger as you keep on training. But if you're not also training the tendons and the ligaments, what eventually can happen is you can lead to overtraining because your muscles feel so strong. So you want to push, but the, the tendons and ligaments haven't caught up yet. They're not to the level of strength that the muscles are. So they're lagging a little bit. And that's where you can get injuries. And most people's injuries that you see, they're not muscle related. They can be, but they're generally more ligament or tendon or bone related. And that's because of that um, imbalance between the muscular strength and the tendon and ligament strength. So by stretching and doing mobility exercises and yoga and things like that, that really makes a huge difference too, so that you don't get injured. And if you're not getting injured, then you can have a consistent workout program and you can stick to it and you will see results because we're not breaking that chain. We're building that consistency, that momentum. The next thing is supplements and macronutrients. The reason why supplements are important for fat loss is because you need to replenish. So again, this all comes back to recovery. So you need to be topping your body up with everything it needs to in order to be as functional as possible. So you need, you need to be firing on all cylinders. And when you're topping up with supplements like vitamin B, vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, magnesium, some super greens, um, that kind of thing, then you're detoxifying your body, you're alkalizing your body, you're protecting um, and coating all of your cells so that you are um, immune to diseases and viruses and things like that. So that just gives you a longer stretch without feeling down or getting sick or anything like that. So that again, it's, we want that ride of momentum. So imagine, you know, it's like surfing, you know, you want to catch a wave, you want to stay on that wave. If you miss the wave, or if you fall off the wave, then you got to swim all the way back out. You got to get, wait for another wave and get another one in. So we want to just get on a wave and stay on that wave for as long as possible. So by having supplements, that really helps us to just stay topped up so that we don't feel low and down and fall off. Um, same with macronutrients. We need to have that nice spread of macronutrients, so proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in a way that serves us and that makes us feel good and helps us burn fat. So if we're not focusing on the macronutrients, then we could have a deficiency in our diet, which could then lead us to uh, have a lowered immune system, which could then lead us to get sick, which could then throw everything out. So we, we want to avoid getting sick as much as possible, obviously, um, but for fat loss as well. And then the last thing for recovery is hydration because hydration is refueling all of that, um, the electrolytes, all of the, um, the hydrations going into the muscle. It's feeding those muscles. It's feeding the body. So when you're training, you want to drink a lot of water. When you're walking, you want to drink a lot of water uh, because you're constantly dehydrating yourself through breathing um, and working out and walking and moving. And so we need to put all of that back in. So we need a lot of water to burn fat. And um, it also the reason why we need a lot of water to burn fat is because the majority of our fat loss comes through our digestion. We, we eliminate it on a daily basis through our urine and through our feces. So if you're not having enough water and you're not hydrated enough, then the digestive system isn't moving fast enough. So you're not eliminating fast enough to, in order to see that weight loss. So it is critical that, you're, that you have a regular digestive system fast moving digestive system in order for you to burn fat. And one of the key 
focus points in order to do that is to be hydrated. Okay, next one is not managing diet properly. So poor diet management or regularly breaking a diet plan will completely stop fat loss. So we need to firstly know our numbers. So we're talking about calories and macros. So we need to know exactly how many calories we need on a daily basis, and we need to stick to that number. So I like to work off your BMR, your basal metabolic rate. So this is the amount of calories that your body burns at rest with no exercise. So for a 24 hour period, if you just did not much at all, you would burn a certain amount of calories because that's just how much calories your body uses up breathing, thinking, you know, your organs operating, just general functionality of the body burns calories over a 24 hour period. So let's say, for example, your BMR, the amount of calories you burn in a 24 hour period is um, 1800 calories. That's mine. Mine's 1800 calories. So I need to make sure that I'm eating 1800 calories and um, I need to make sure that within those 1800 calories, I have a good split of macronutrients, meaning a good split of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that will help me to burn fat. Um, we need to match the diet with the targets that we're trying to accomplish. So because we want to burn fat, then we need to match the macros and the calories to meet that target. So if I wanted to burn fat, I would want to be in a calorie deficit. But if I wanted to um, increase my weight and increase my muscle, then I would want to be in a calorie surplus, meaning that I'm consuming more calories than I'm burning because that's what it will take in order for me to gain uh, weight and to gain uh, a lot of muscle. So if you're in a calorie deficit and you're doing heavy tra weight training and you're walking a lot, then you never have to worry about getting bulky or getting too big, quote unquote, because we're in a calorie deficit. So we should be reducing the weight overall. So that means you'll shrink down and get more tone and more firm and more shaped up as opposed to getting like bigger and bulkier. Um, the next thing is cheat meals and alcohol. So I think it's okay to have a cheat meal once in a while, but again, you have to think back to what I was saying about that riding that wave of momentum. And when we have a cheat meal, it can derail us in many different ways. It can derail us by just putting that thought into our head and then you have it once and then that makes you crave it and continue to have it or you kind of break that mindset. Um, the other thing is... Uh, if you do it too frequently, then it just means that you might not get any traction at all. So you don't really want to have a cheat meal like every weekend. You don't want to be out drinking alcohol every weekend. Uh, if it's like more like once a month or, or just not at all, then that is way better. Um, I think once a month is acceptable. It won't break the momentum too much. It might slow you down for 24 hours after it depending on the cheat meal that you're having, how many calories you're having, what your output is, that kind of thing. So it's very different for everybody and how your body responds to that specific food as well. But we don't want to have too many cheat meals and too much alcohol because it does derail. And it is a very, very common mistake that I see people make where th there's just too many cheat meals. Uh, they're just coming off the diet plan too frequently and it's just not enough to gain that momentum and that traction. So Amongst all of these different strategies within the diet management, we I mentioned before, we have to have like our, our diet matching our targets. So that's where we need to select how we're going to approach our calories and our macros. So I mentioned with the calories, we want to aim for our BMR number. So whatever your BMR number is, that's roughly around the calories that you want to target. And then in terms of splitting up those macros, we can go for a zone diet. We could go for a keto diet. So a zone diet would be 40% carbohydrates, 30% fat, 30% protein. A keto diet would be virtually no carbohydrates, no sugar at all, where we're just having carb, uh, protein and fat only. There's also a carnivore diet. There's also a vegan diet. There's so many different options that you can take. And then we have intermittent fasting as well. So intermittent fasting is what we can plug on to our macro diet. So let's say you're doing the zone diet. So you've got 40% carbohydrates, 30% protein, and 30% fat. You've got a calorie number based on your BMR. So for me, let's say it's 1800. And then I want to do intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is where I would not eat food for, I recommend 18 hours. 
So that means that basically you do not eat in the a.m. in the mornings. So you skip all morning. So you have your dinner in the evening. Let's say 7 p.m. you have dinner. And then you wouldn't eat anything until about 1 p.m. the following day. So you would skip everything through. You just drink water and have zero calories throughout that whole morning period. So now you're fasting for 18 hours. And that really helps your body to tap into the stored body fat and use that as a fuel source as opposed to you burning up the calories that you're eating and not touching the stored fat, if that makes sense. Okay, not training properly is the next common mistake that I see. So there's levels of intensity and there's types of exercises that make a big difference to your fat loss. So the most impactful way to burn fat is with strength training. So some of you might be thinking, well, what about cardio? Cardio is great as well. Cardio burns calories. There's no doubt about that. Um, but strength training not only burns calories while you're doing the workout, but it also has an afterburn effect. So that means that you're, you have an elevated amount of calorie burning for up to 24 hours after you complete your strength training exercise. Um, as opposed to cardio, you will just peak and then it'll come back down again. So strength training is more effective over the long term and you will get a better result because you will also be toning up your muscles and strengthening your muscles ligaments tendons and bones as well so this has a, a longevity effect as well and um, you have a much lower risk of injury when you're doing strength training controlled weights and it's very um, scalable so it doesn't matter what strength level what fitness level you're at you can start from a very low light weight and you can have a very effective workout and you can also scale it all the way up to lifting very heavy weights and having a very effective workout. So um, scalable for everybody, doable for everybody. Not everybody can do cardio. Not everybody can go for a 10K run because of ankle problems, uh, knee problems, hip problems, you know, uh, lung capacity issues, um, just overall fitness level. Uh, so it's much easier to get started with strength training and focus on that. And you'll get a better outcome overall when it comes to your fat burning. So strength training must be the priority. Uh, a lot of people just get into this mindset where cardio is going to burn fat, but it's you really need to get into the weights at a deeper level. And that's how you'll get the result. If you think about a bodybuilder, so the two main things that a bodybuilder or any kind of um, physique competitor, the two main things they focus on is being super lean and being muscular. So, um, and, and they don't do cardio. So they generally, they'll just do weight training every day and they'll walk every day. And that's the combination to get that really lean physique, but also be super toned. Now they take steroids and they take all sorts and they eat massive amounts of calories at the same time. So it's very different for a physique athlete uh, where they're really putting on a lot of size. The average person, if we just stick to our weight training and we, um, and we focus on the right diet plan, then we will just tone and slim and shrink down and be super lean and super fit. So um, there's also high intensity training versus steady state cardio. So you've probably heard of steady state cardio being a good um, fat burning kind of zone, which is true. And that is an approach that you can take. And um, that would be like your power walking, for example. So high intensity would be like HIIT training, boot camp training, Tabata training, where you have a short spike at high intensity and then do nothing for a short period of time. So Tabata is known to be one of the best forms of um, HIIT training. And that's where you will go 20 second burst at 100% max effort. And then you'll go 10 seconds rest, 20 second burst, 10 seconds rest, 20 second burst, 10 second rest. You do that for eight rounds, takes four minutes and that's one Tabata. So you could do like a whole workout, 30 plus minutes of just Tabatas where you'll do four minute intervals of these high down, up, down, up, down type of training. Very effective way of training, especially if you're using uh, weights as your exercise method within the Tabata training. Okay, steady state cardio. So here's how we work this out. It's 50 to 70% heart rate of your max heart rate. So to work out your max heart rate, it's 220 minus your age. So for me, I've got an example here using my numbers. So I'm 43. So 220 minus 43 is 177. So my quote unquote max heart rate is 177 beats per minute. 
Now, if I want to get into the steady state cardio, I need to hit 50 to 70% of that max heart rate. So I'm looking for 50 to 70% of 177 beats per minute. So 100 and, so 50% of 177 is 88.5 beats per minute. That's the lower end of the steady state cardio. And 70% of my max heart rate is 123.9, let's say 124 beats per minute. So that's the top end of my steady state cardio. So if I stick between 89 and 124 beats per minute, then that would keep me in that steady state cardio. It's not too high, so I can sustain it for a longer period of time. So I could do like a 60 minute power walk at that heart rate zone or on a um, stationary bike or on a rower or you know some kind of cardio machine. And I can stick within that 50 to 70% of my max heart rate. And that's my steady state cardio. You want to do this for a longer period of time. So you don't want to do steady state cardio for 10 minutes. You more want to do it for like 45 minutes or more, at least 30 minutes. And um, so that is how you would do that. And it's good to do both. Um, you want to do a combination of everything, you know, you see what, how your body responds best. Everybody's different. So both very beneficial ways to burn fat. Um, but ultimately you need to focus on the, um, getting a good training workout in and, or a good, good workout program uh, created for yourself so that you're hitting the intensity levels that you need to, so that you can get the results that you want. Um, and as I mentioned before, building muscle and getting bulky is often an objection that some people have, uh, particularly women when, um, you know, they're not familiar or, you know, they haven't done a lot of weights and they don't have a lot of experience around weights, but you will know that when you get a good program, like the program that I give you, um, you will not get big and bulky. You'll get toned and lean and shaped up and slim and you'll burn fat. Your body fat percentage will come down. And so that's really what we're going for. So ultimately, at the end of the day, fat loss is a mindset. And what you focus on is what you'll get. So you need to tap into what is important to you, why you want it, what's your big why, the big reason for wanting to do this. And you need to get that motivation behind you um, because there's two types of ways we're motivated. We're either motivated by pain or we're motivated by pleasure. And it could be a combination of both. But for the most part, for most people, we are motivated by pain. So if we can think about all of the pain around the current state that we're in today, and what would happen in three months time if nothing changes? What would happen if we progressively get worse with our health and our weight in six months time? What happens at the end of this year if um, nothing improves? How will we feel? What state will we, will we be in? What if that goes for five years? Then where will we be? What happens if that goes for 10 years? Will we still be alive? You know, what kind of situation are we going to be in? And then that can kind of help you to drive up a bit of pain and say, no, I don't want that for myself. I don't want to be that person in the future. I want to change. And that can make you change now. So that's being driven by pain. And then we can be driven by pleasure as well where you have a dress that you want to fit into, or you have a, a item of clothing that you maybe used to fit into in the past when you were younger or, you know, previous years ago, and you want to get back to that, or you just want to get to a, a goal that you've never seen before as an adult, you know, a body weight or, or a size or something like that. And you can visualize yourself feeling great and uh, visualize what you can do with your body at that um, level of health, you know, you can run, you can jump, you can play with the kids, you know, you can live long, you can feel young, you can look young, um, all of those great things. So that's a motivator of pleasure. So it's good to have a bit of both, but ultimately what's going to move the needle most is the pain. So you need to really get um, serious and focused on the pain of this current state of situation that you're in and what would happen if nothing changes moving forward. And that can help to just motivate you and drive you and if we're not planning, um, then we're failing because failing to plan is planning to fail. So we need to have a plan. We need to get organized. And this is where a lot of people go wrong is this just the lack of the lack of planning. So if we can get serious about it and get focused on it, we can plan. Most people will spend more time planning a holiday than they will planning out their health routine. You know, you're planning a holiday, what hotel we're staying at, what restaurants are we going to, what are we going to do each day, you know, how are we getting transport between here and there, 
everything is so meticulously planned out when you when you're planning a holiday but our life we don't do that and the holiday is so awesome because you plan it out so well and you know exactly the outcome that you want and you make it amazing but we don't do that for our lives we don't do that for our health so we need to take that mindset which we can all do we're all capable of doing it because if you can do it in one area of your life then you can do it in all areas of your life so if you're really efficient at work and you're really organized at work or you're really organized with your kids and your family and your home and stuff like that, but your health personally is falling apart, then you need to take that mindset that you have when you are working or when that you're managing your family or, or whatever you do really, you're really good at. And you need to direct that same energy into your health, because if you can do it there, you can do it here as well. And you need to make fat loss your goal and your priority. It needs to be the number one goal. So for some of you, it might be like, yeah, I'd like to burn a few kilos. I'd also like to be able to um, run in the city to surf. And <clears throat> I'd also like to, um, you know, be able to do this and do that. And you might have a whole bunch of different things you want to do. If fat loss is the thing that you ultimately need, then that needs to be the number one priority. And every type of exercise, every type of diet, every meal, every everything needs to be all leading towards accomplishing that goal as your priority and if you can do that and if you can just increase the, the priority level then that's what's going to get you over the line and that's where you're going to start to see that momentum and see that real shift start to change so it is all mindset it is all how you approach it so you need to approach it in a way that is structured and planned out and thought through so that you can have the best possible outcome in the shortest amount of time so I hope that helps you. I hope there's some things that I've talked about in these, these five most common mistakes that maybe you're making from time to time. And then that can help you to change that problem and for you to be able to just improve in that area so that you're not making these common mistakes and that you're seeing the fat loss that you want to see and um, you're getting the results that you want. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that was useful. And if you have any questions, let me know and we can have a chat about overcoming any of the hurdles that you're going through um, as you are attaining your fat loss goals.